united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Praise God, praise God. Good morning, wherever you are watching, wherever you are tuning in. We are so glad that you've been able to join us in this uh, great program, United with Christ. It is our pleasure to uh, be with you. And uh, thank you so much for finding time. I know things are, you are busy in one way or another. And so we really appreciate you for coming in. We don't take it for granted that you've been able to come. Uh, my name again is Pastor James Mutero. I am the senior pastor of Times of Refreshing International Ministries here in El Paso, Texas. And we are in uh, 6501 Boeing Drive, Suite I. That is where our church is. And uh, you are welcome to visit us anytime, uh, any, anytime in our services. We meet on Fridays at 7, and also we meet on Sunday at 10 a.m. And uh, we, we'll, we would love you to visit us if you find time. And if you don't find time, you can also uh, be able to watch us on Facebook Live in times of refreshing international ministries. So we have a web page, and you can be able, I know right now we are going through challenges, and not so many people are able to attend services, uh, but you can be able to watch our programs uh, even on Facebook, if you have a Facebook account. Uh, we are so delighted to come, to come back again. Uh, I know we were here last week, and uh, we had a wonderful program. I hope it was a blessing to you. And, uh, and before we begin, I also want to uh, thank Pastor Lori uh, and her husband for connecting us with this great ministry. We really thank God because it's a divine connection. And we know God has uh, created this for, for you so that God can minister to you. Uh, so tonight, today we are, we are also privileged. I have one of our ministers uh, with me here, Pastor Isaac. And he's going to say hi to you. Uh, he's joined me today. And uh, Isaac, we are so glad that you've been able to come so that you can uh, be with me. God bless you. Uh, say God hi bless today. you so much. It's a privilege and uh, it's an honor to be here this, uh, this, this morning. And uh, in spite of everything that is going on, we are grateful for this privilege. And uh, just as the word of God says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17, uh, all the way to 18, that even if the field will fail, the fig tree will not produce, mm. but I will praise the God, the, the Lord of my salvation. So this is our song this morning, and it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And uh, I know we are in for a, a good time and a, and a blessing of the Lord. May you feel blessed as you tune in. May God bless you so much. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Isaac, for that word of an encouragement. Uh, we bless God because uh, I know we need God at a time like this. And uh, it's, it's really important that we focus on God uh, because he's the source of help. I know people are going through a lot of uh, challenges. And that is what uh, I want to share with you what to do in the time of, uh, of challenges. Uh, and also, before I share the word of God, I want you to know that uh, we have a prayer line here in the studio where you can call. The number is down there on the screen. You can call that number and somebody can pray with you and uh, so that we can, you, we, can, we can agree with you concerning your need. Whatever you're going through, as I said, I know many people are going through challenges. Uh, the Lord is there to uh, encourage you, to strengthen you, and also to meet your need. So don't hesitate to call. And uh, we thank God. We, also, we thank God for this program, United for Christ, uh, and also for this ministry, KSC uh, Television. Uh, it's such a great avenue for the gospel. Uh, I would encourage you to consider supporting this station. KCSC is a Christian station here in El Paso. Uh, whatever you can, uh, you know, this station is, is, uh, runs through donations and, you know, well wishes. You can support them. You can support them with whatever you can, uh, and also you can pray for them uh, so that the ministry will continue going. So we thank God for this establishment, and we thank God for what God is doing through this ministry in El Paso and, and many other places. 
I want us to, to look because, as I said, uh, there are so many things people are going through right now. And, uh, and uh, sometimes when people go through problems, uh, especially with the COVID-19, uh, so many other problems have come, come in. You find people are facing marital problems, financial problems. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you lost your marriage. Maybe you lost your relationship. You lost your business. Whatever problem that you are going through, we are here to let you know there is hope in God. There is hope in God. And so today, I'm just here to, to strengthen you and to, to encourage you that God loves you and God has a plan for your life. Uh, it is not over. Uh, whatever is going through, you are going through, is not there to finish you. It's not there to destroy you or to, uh, to kill you. No, 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 no. So long as you are breathing this morning, God has a great plan on you. And I like saying this, God has a miracle with your name on it. God has a blessing with a name, uh, name on it. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. It doesn't matter your background. God uh, has, a, has a purpose in your life. I want us to share here briefly in the, in the scriptures. Uh, in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 1. Because I want us to talk about uh, uh, how we can be strong in such a time. How we can be strong. Because most people have become weak, especially at such a time. Whenever we are faced with circumstances, uh, sometimes we can lose strength. And when I talk about strength, it is strength in many dimensions. You can lose strength financially. You can st lose strength emotionally. And, uh, and so today the strength I'm going to talk about is the inner strength, the inner strength, which is the foundation of your life. Because uh, uh, for you, it's good for you to know that you are not just, uh, you don't just have a body. You are actually a spirit having a uh, having a soul and living in a body. So the real you is your spirit. And so what you need to focus on is how is the condition of your spirit. Are you strong on the inside? Because if you are not strong on the inside, then you fail on the outside. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, if you fail in the time of adversity, then you are strength, then you are weak. And the weakness that the Bible is, uh, talks about most of the time it is the, 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 the weakness or the strength on the inside. And so I want us to share about one man called Joshua. Joshua went through a lot of challenges, especially after the death of Moses. Uh, that is Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan and all these people unto the land which I give unto thee even to the children of Israel. You see, this was a major challenge to Joshua. Uh, Joshua uh, was, a, was a servant of Moses. And you see, the Lord is telling Joshua to arise. Whenever you see the Bible, uh, the word of God saying arise, it means Joshua was in a low state. He was discouraged because his mentor had died. Somebody he looked upon, somebody uh, who... Who, uh, who, who, was a, who was a great man, a great mentor in his life, was gone. And it's like he was hopeless. And that's the same way, you know, sometimes in our life, you find there are th things you relied on your life, and they have died. Maybe your business died. Maybe your relationship died. Maybe whatever you are clinging on, whatever you are hoping on, died. And uh, that is, uh, you know, Moses, when I look at Joshua, Actually, the very first thing is like he was in denial. Because God is telling Joshua, my servant is dead. In other words, he's not, he was not like believing. He is telling him not to continue uh, hoping on, on, on Moses because his servant is dead. He says, he, he said to him, my servant is dead. Therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. God wants you to arise wherever you are you can still make it again. You know, the Bible says somewhere, I think in the book of Proverbs, there is hope for a tree. Though it's cut down, it shall still sprout again. As long as you are breathing, even if maybe you see you don't have many days ahead of you, I want to tell you there is hope in God. You can still rise up. And so my message this morning, 
is that God wants you to arise from that condition you are. Don't, don't be negative in your life. Most people at times like this, when things are going wrong, we destroy our own life by our own words. But it's time for you to arise and say, you know what? I have hope in God. I know I can still make it. The Lord to said to Moses, uh, Joshua, arise, because there's a major responsibility ahead of you. And I, ha I, have, I have good news for you this morning, that there is a major responsibility. There are blessings that are ahead of you. For those who are watching me, maybe your ministry has gone down. I want to let you know your ministry uh, is going to sprout again. Your relationship is going to sprout again. Why? Because the Lord is telling Joshua here, arise and take up the mantle. Take up your position. There was still a purpose that was upon Joshua. Joshua had despaired. Maybe he thought his life is over. But God is telling him, you are the one to lead these people to their promised land. You are the one to take them to the land of the promise. And I want to let you know there is a land of your promise. There is a land of promise ahead of you. There are promises. There are things God has promised for you to inherit. But you can never inherit them unless you arise. There is so much in store for you. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you think or imagine. The Bible also says somewhere in the book of Jeremiah, chapter, 9, verse, uh, uh, chapter 29, verse 11, that I have a good plan for you. God has a plan. You might look at around and you wonder, where is the plan of God in all this? In all this mess, maybe you have lost a loved one whom you depended upon. Maybe you lost your husband that was a, a pillar in your life. And you look at yourself and say, you know what, my, my hope is gone. Maybe you had a wife in your life and maybe she passed away with COVID-19. Or maybe you had property or you had business and is dead. I want to let you know that it's time for you to arise. Why? Because the Lord is saying there is the promised land ahead of you. There is what God has in store. God has great things in store for you. And so quit looking at the condition you are. I want you to look at what God, God is saying about you. Don't go by what people say about you or about what you see. Go by what God is saying. You see, Joshua, there is, there is what, let me tell you, there is what is the opinion of people. People will give you opinion. People might look at your life uh, and can give up on you. Maybe, maybe you are sick in the hospital or you've been sick. And maybe the doctor has given you days to live. But I want to let you know it is not final until God says it is final. There was man, one man in the Bible called Hezekiah. And in fact, the man of God, Isaiah, uh, uh, pro went, went to him and prophesied. And he said, go keep your, your, put your house in order for you're going to die. But I thank God for this man, and I thank God because he's written in the Bible. Though he had no hope as far as the prophet is concerned, because the prophet said, you're going to die. You put your house in order, you're about to die. But the Bible says Hezekiah faced the wall, and he called his God. And the Bible says God added more years to his life. So it is not over until God says it is over. Don't go by the opinion of people. Don't go by what people say. Don't even go by your feelings. No, go by what the word of God is saying. It is time for you to go to the word of God and look at the promises of God concerning your life. The Lord says he has a good life ahead of you. There is a land for you to possess. You see, he said, to, he said, uh, he said as I was, my, my servant Moses is dead, therefore rise over Go into this Jordan and all these people unto the land which I, I give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your feet shall trend, that have I given you, as I said to Moses. He is telling Joshua, they need, he needs to take a step of faith. This is a moment you need to take a, take, take, uh, take a step of faith. You need to step out by faith. You need to take a step out and start another business. 
You need to trust God for, for the healing of your marriage. He said every step of your feet, every place you will step upon, I will give it unto you. And then he says, um, as I was, um, every place that thou, thy soul of thy feet shall trend upon, I have given you, as I said unto Moses. And then he gives him the extended. The Bible says, from the wilderness uh, of this Lebanon, unto the great river, river Euphrates, and to the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, to, to a great sea towards the going down the sun, shall be your course. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. Nobody is going to stand before you. You see, the, I want you to take this word as your word this morning because God has given me this message for you. That it is not over for you. No matter how the news is framing even our city, we refuse to go by the news. May you refuse to go by the news. When you look at the news, be careful. News can destroy your, your, your inner strength. It is, there's nothing wrong with watching the news, but whenever you watch news, do it. Uh, I, normally, I normally watch news, and especially of late, I've been watching news. But whenever I watch news, I take them as prayer items. I look at the news to get materials to go before God in prayer. In other words, when you see the negativity even concerning our city, it is not time for you to pack and leave El Paso. It is time to say, you know what? Our city shall rise up again. And I know our city shall be a great testimony. May you believe together with me that even our city, it has been known to have a great uh, number of COVID cases. But I have news for you. We are rising up again in El Paso. Uh, our city of El Paso is rising. And so you need to take a step of faith. You can't just believe God and say, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm arising. The part of arising is taking a step of faith. If it is relationship, you need to take a step of faith and talk to your spouse. Maybe if you are separated, now take a step of faith. Tell the Lord, I'm going according to your word, and I'm taking a step of faith. That is what he, he told Joshua. And he told Joshua, no man shall stand before you. There will be no resistance. In other words, don't fear. Don't fear the opposition, because whenever you are taking a step of faith, in other words, God was trying to tell him, whenever you see a promise of God, it's because God sees the opposition. When God says, no man shall, uh, no, uh, there shall not be any man be able to stand before you, it means when you start taking a step of faith, there will be resistance. But don't worry about it. Remember this scripture. And the Bible says, as I was with Moses... I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I want you to personalize those words. And he say, put your name there. And he say, put your name there. And he say, as he was with Moses, he's with James, or he's with Isaac. And so God will not fail me, neither will he forsake me. But then he gives them the tools for him to be able to do that. He says, be strong and be of good courage. So what you need is to be strong. He is telling him, in order for you to take a step of faith, as you arise, you need to be strong. You need to strengthen yourself. You see, the Bible says be strong. That means it was the responsibility of Joshua to strengthen himself. You see, the strength that God is talking about here is not the physical strength. He is telling him to be strong on the inside. And I'm going to explain this. The Bible says, Be strong and be of good courage. And to these people shall thou divide an inheritance, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be of good courage, that thou mayest be able to observe, to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. So there are conditions. There are conditions God put to Joshua. He said, In order for you to be able to get your inheritance, in order for you to get your business back, in order for you to get your marriage back, you need to be strong and be of good courage. You cannot allow yourself to be timid. You have to be strong. You have to walk in the strength of the Lord. But how do you become strong? He gives him the, the way to become strong. He says, be strong and be of good courage. 
uh, that thou may be able to observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. So what is the word God has spoken into your life? The Bible says, go with the command of God. What God has spoken to your life, there is that rema word that God is speaking to you even right now. There is the rema word, not the logos. It's good to have the logos, but there is also the, your personal word, maybe a prophetic word or the word that it jumps out of the scriptures for you. You see, the Bible says also, for, her, for, for him to be strong, he gave him the, uh, the, the he, he also gave him the way to be strong. The Bible says, verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate it, verses 8, day and night. So for, for us to be strong in such a time, it depends on how we are feeding. How strong are you on the inside? You need to be strong on the inside. Most people are, are strengthening themselves. And the reason why we fail is because we are just relying on our outer strength. What will keep you going, what will cause you to take the, your inheritance, what will cause you to take what God has in store for you, it is the strength inside of you. It is your inner strength. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You need the physical bread, but more than the physical bread, you need the spiritual bread. That is why he's telling Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall, you shall eat it. May you form a habit of eating the word of God. This is a time to meditate on the word of God. This is a time to read the scriptures, the promises of God concerning your family, concerning your marriage, concerning your business. Speak them to, 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 your, to yourself. Meditate on them day and night. You see, you are created to become a meditator. You cannot tell me you don't meditate. You know, when you're walking around, you think so. You, you, every time you're meditating on something, you have an ability to think, to meditate on something. And so you either meditate on the positive things or negative. And so as a time like this, we need, it to, we need to meditate on the word of God. How do you generate strength from the word of God? It's through meditation. Meditation is, is the chewing of the word of God. It's like when you, you, when, you, when you chew food, physical food. So meditation, you are chewing the word of God in your spirit. And you generate strength. And when you generate that strength, that is what keeps you, that is what causes you to pick up your inheritance. In other words, you generate faith. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses, uh, uh, 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you, when you, when you, when you, when you put the word of God in you and you meditate on it, it generates a force called faith. And faith is what causes you to get your inheritance. And so this morning, we have come here to strengthen you and to encourage you that you have an inheritance ahead of you. You have better days. The better days, you have never seen them. They are ahead of you. The better days in my life are ahead of me. So what I need to focus is what God is saying. And I want you to take this word concerning Joshua. It is your word. It is the prophetic word of the season. This word was put there, not just for us to read. No, no, no. It is for me. There is a great inheritance ahead of you. And I want to pray for you right now because I know my time is up. I want to believe God with you that whatever God has promised you in your life will begin to manifest. But remember this. You need to go back into the word of God. Do not meditate on the circumstance that is surrounding you. Do not meditate on what people are saying. Do not meditate on what the news are saying. Meditate on what God is saying. Focus on the word of God. And when you do that, it will create a whole difference in your life. You're going to be able to possess your land that is ahead of you. And so you need to know that there is a land that is ahead of you. There are lands, not just one. Lands. The Bible says, he said to Joshua, as wherever you are, you are, you are, you are, the sole of your feet shall step upon you will possess. You have the limit of how much you can get. 
And so this morning, I want to pray for you. If you are not born again, I want first of all to pray for those who want to give your life to Christ. You can never overcome a time like this if you have not given your life to Christ. And so I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I surrender my life from today. Make me a new creation so that I can be able to overcome in these times. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. I know you have received God in your heart. Let me pray for all of you. Father, I want to thank you for everyone that was able to tune in today. Thank you for the audience. Thank you even for this uh, station and this program, United with Christ. Father, I pray that your blessing will rest upon your people. Stretch your hand wherever you are. If you are sick, lay hands on wherever you are sick. I pray that you be healed. May the Lord restore you and bless you. God bless you so much. We are so glad that you've been able to be with us. And I know uh, your life will never be the same. I want you from now for you to be positive. Be careful with what people say about you. Be careful what people say about what you have. Be careful uh, concerning the news when you are watching the news. Don't consume anything. Don't, don't allow everything to go into your spirit. May you have a sieve in your ears, your eyes, or whatever you see around, because God wants you to be strong on the inside. When you are strong, then you're going to be able to take your inheritance because God has great things in his store for you. Better days are ahead of you, for you and your family. Also confess it. Speak it to yourself. Declare all these things because when you declare, great things happen on you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, until next week, uh, same time, may God bless you. Shalom, shalom.